All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Revolution FC. As you see, we are just a little over a month away from uh, the Grand Prix 1999. So I'm very interested to see how this turns out because I I even surprised myself with uh, some of the things I have because I even forgot that I had set up a women's division. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see as far as uh, some of this is concerned. I think I definitely... I set up the tournament. I set up the first uh, women's open weight uh, title match. So uh, yeah, be interesting to see how this happens. Be interesting to see if uh, Alexander Frank and Noguera can uh, keep a hold of his title in this Grand Prix. We'll see how this happens. Watching Fighter Fest Saturday? Probably not because I'll be. Um, here, let me. <coughs> I don't think I'm waiting on anything. No, and I apologize by the way if I start like, kind of like sniffling and coughing a little bit. I'm still, even after a week and a half, I'm still trying to kind of get over a little bit of the allergies and and cold cold crap that I've been through. So, yeah, I'm gonna apologize in advance for that. <clears throat> But uh, probably won't be watching Fighter Fest because I'll be at uh, at the arena in Des Moines uh, watching the IFL playoffs because the Barnstormers have I think they're facing the Sioux Falls Storm, which they just they just had that a couple uh, they just had that game a couple weeks ago too, and we ended up beating them so that'll be nice. I don't exactly know what the IFL brackets look like right this second, but. I mean, it's pretty much a, if we win there, we'll get to the championship again. So his pictures look like criminal snapshots. It wouldn't surprise me because I've seen I've seen some people do uh, TEW databases that used uh, criminal snapshots like they, they used mug shots for some of the pictures. <laughs> I was like, that's clearly a, his mug shot. All right, let's see what we got here. Ian Freeman. And da, 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 da. Ooh, Jake Shields. I bet you UFC is going to take him, but we'll see if uh, we can get Jake Shields. Let me see. Nothing rival bid right now. So four years, ten fights. Make that offer. There you go. I'm sure UFC will come knocking uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, we had some of the other guys. Uh, looks like we had some guys leave. Oh, no! The heartbreak kid Nathaniel Baroni left us. Rico Rodriguez is one thing, but the heartbreak kid? No! Oh, uh, Nathaniel Baroni signed with Pancrase. Oh, no. <clears throat> It's a rough looking toy. I think it's a. I think it's a just a created guy, but it was great because it's the heartbreak kid, and then it's a dude who's clearly like in his fifties. I was like, that's fantastic. Uh, so it looks like he might be in England. Let's see here. He's he's a thousand dollars a fight. I don't know if I'll do. We could try him. He just, even in that face, he just like, yep, I'm here. I exist. <clears throat> Move to America so I can sign you. I guess I'll sign him for a thousand. That's not bad. I've done worse. There you go. And cool. Was there anything else that I was missing? You know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we got we got enough fights. As long as we don't lose anybody to injuries in the process. Hmm. <sighs> 
Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. We left his team. Brad Kohler returned after his legal issues. Kit Cope left his team. All right. Everything's looking good. <clears throat> Man, my throat and sinuses. Oh, my God. I've been suffering. <laughs> I've been, been not doing too hot. Oh, we should probably look at uh, this. Jake Shields. Uh, Ian Freeman and Jake Shields have both signed on. All right, perfect. We'll use them on the next one then. Good lord. All right. Get through this. Uh, we should probably look, see if there's anything else. Dwayne Kason recovered from his injury. Okay. So he'll be available for the next one. All right, let's go to weigh-in night. Yoko Takahashi. Looks like someone I, could, I, I would like to use, but probably can't. <laughs> Let's see. Yoko Takahashi. Is she signed with it? She's not signed with anybody because there's no one really there. 1,800 a fight. She's done a lot of local fighters. Hmm. I'm not a big fan of the 1,800 a fight, but I could build her up potentially. Right. I wonder if we could get her... Well, no, she's currently affiliated with a team, so more than likely she's not going to move base. So, Okay. Yeah, I'm just kind of stuck with what I got. Uh, Yumiko Hota beat a local fighter. She has a team already, so she's not going to leave. All the fighters look like drug addicts. I mean, it was the 90s, so... Probably not that far off base. Oh, look, everyone made weight. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Uh, UFC 39 hostile territory in March. Silva versus Ishmael Militich will be there. Okay. By the way, before this, I wonder if I have enough people who aren't in the Grand Prix that I could put into another show. <coughs> Let me see. I want to make sure that the the um, the numbering is right. So the next one is going to be seventeen. All right. I do want to see how many we've done each. So we did five shows last year. Or five shows in 97. One, two, three, four, five. Six shows in 98. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll be doing eight shows this year. So hopefully we can kind of start pulling up on doing a show at least once a month. That is my hope. Probably won't happen, but it's worth a chance. Uh, what is our availability? Okay, so yeah, people who are going to be fighting. Yeah, all right, so I think we got enough for an actual show. Uh, I wonder if we should just keep the basic regional right now. That's 8,000. That's 10,000. Uh, whoops. Let's go back up here. I forget. Where are we doing this show? California. So we can go back to Nevada. We'll go back to LA. And that should be good. 10,000 do I want to do? Yeah, fuck it. We'll do 10,000. All right. Revolution 17. Let's let's add that before we get to our get to our uh, Grand Prix. So, all right. We need We need a <clears throat> uh, 
main event. We got guy on a winning streak. Another guy on a winning streak. Uh, preferably two guys who might do well. These guys faced each other last year. Hmm. I want a possible contenders match. But I want to see. Genki Sudo's only had one fight, though. <clears throat> but he would be a main eventer. So, Genki Sudo's a possibility. Paul Buentello. Uh, what's he been looking like? He's got three straight victories right now. So, Buentello might earn himself a good uh, championship match here. I think that's what I might actually do. I can't really see anyone else. So, I think that's going to be our main event right there. Fabiano, who is on a two-fight win streak, won four of his last five fights, versus Buentello, who has hit... Uh, three straight wins and also won four of his last five fights. These two guys can get a shot at number one contendership. <clears throat> Suffering from a drug addiction of steroids and Xanax. Yep, that sounds about right. All right, any other potential main event guys? Mark Hill, Kid Boy A, thanks for the bits. I appreciate it. <clears throat> Uh, who could face Mark Hall? Uh, Dave, Ma Dave Manet. They fought to each other last year. But you know what? It's been a year. I think these two could probably fight again. All right. Who else is another? <coughs> Ryan Bowe. Uh, he's coming off a defeat. He just broke his losing streak, but he's not that great. Um, Toby Amada could. That's that seems kind of okay. I could I could do that. Let's do Toby Amada. I think they probably do better than Hamane, maybe. We'll do that. <laughs> Um, let's come down here, see what we got. We need to get Mike Pyle in a match. Find a guy. Rodney Glunder broke his losing streak. He could he could uh, do well here against Mike Pyle. We'll go ahead and do that. Let's see. Who else has maybe not had Barrett Yoshida? Uh, J.R. Palmer could be that. Let me see if there's... Ooh, Dirty Bob Shriver. <laughs> Man, this poor dude could use a win somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. <clears throat> Jeff Monson should probably have a, a, a fight. Maybe Jeff Monson should actually be higher up on a different card. That might be a better idea. Eh, you know what? He'll face Genki Sudo. That'll be down right about there, right below Hall Monet. So we got six fights. Uh, let me see here. Let's see. We need Ian Freeman. Who should he face? Brad Kohler hasn't fought since he's he's been out a couple of couple of events. So he hasn't fought in almost a year. He's coming off a couple of losses. We could give him a fight. That's seven. So let's see. We come down here. Let's see here. Coming off a victory, so we could keep using Rich Clemens. And he could face Tim Lajic. 
They've never fought before. They got they got okay records. I'm, I'm, I'm about that. Let's do that then. Here we go. I would like to see how many guys I have left. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Oh, my God. You know, I think we actually have enough to set up for a February event, too. We might actually do that as well. <coughs> and then we can have our March event be uh, the title fight. Whoever wins the Grand Prix and walks away with the Open Weight Championship faces the winner of Fabiano and Bolantello in March. I think that would work out well. All right, so who's a potential main eventer? Is someone a bona fide main eventer? Uh, no one's a bona fide main eventer, so we'll have potential main eventers here. In fact, I might. Let's take Monson. Let's take Monson and Pseudo off this card, and they'll headline the next one. So February of two thousand. We'll go basic regional on that. We'll go to California for that. And we could set that up. We could do um, Monson and... Oh my god, who was it? <laughs> Pooh. It's the only other main eventer. There you go, Genki Sudo. That could be, that could be our main event there. Both coming off of a win. So we'll throw one more fight in here that could be a preliminary one. So let's see if we can find some preliminary guys. Jake Shields needs a uh, needs a needs a first bit there. Someone on the main card who could maybe face um, Eugene Jackson might be an idea. Thomas Denny. David Terrell. How about David Terrell? You're not willing to fight him under any circumstances. Are you guys... You guys must be on the same team. Or... There must be something there. Dixon's Dungeon Team. Okay. There's got to be something, man. Oh, he's got a strong friendship with Jake... Sh oh, okay. David Terrell and Jake Shields are friends. Okay. Well... <clears throat> Okay. How about Joe Camacho? Hmm. Or Masatoshi Abe. You know what? I'm going to go back up here. I'm going to do Eugene Jackson. It's a bit more lopsided than some of the other ones, but I'll work on that. All right. J.R. Palmer is going to get a going to get something here. Uh, he should face Alex Cook since they're both on losing streaks. Both are not doing too well. That's an opening fight if I've ever seen it. A 1 and 5 guy and 0 and 5 guy. <coughs> Guys who are not used to winning in uh, in our promotion. Let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, Hiroyuki Abe. Let me see, is there anybody else who hasn't fought for us? Okay. Hirono should probably try to face somebody who he could potentially. How about Mike Bork? I feel like that is not a matchup I would want. How about Greg McIntyre? He looks like they're they're probably about the same. They look like they're about the same. Yeah. We'll go with that. And he's a hometown guy, so we'll give him a good fight there. Where where do they say they should be on the main card? All right, so they could potentially be main eventers. The Juice Robinsons of MMA. Glad Juice lost the dreads. Yeah. It was an interesting, uh, it was an interesting uh, look, but yeah, I can see why it would be a bit of a pain. All right, uh, here are Yuki Abe and Dwayne Kason. Kason's not been in the best of straights here. 
You can face off against them. They've never fought before. I'll take it. Case on Abe. <coughs> Let's see. Mike Bork. Mike Bork is a hometown guy. He needs to find someone he could face. Joel Sutton is about the closest right now. Uh, cut some more. Uh, ooh, Stephen Palling. That'd probably be a good idea. Yep, I guess Stephen Palling is going to be it. <clears throat> All right, so we got five fights there. We got three more fights there. Ooh, Takeuchi needs a uh, Takeuchi needs something here because he's he just came off a uh, a title fight, so he needs he needs a strong fight. Probably in the semi main event. Thomas Denny's a possibility. Ooh, David Terrell. All right, there you go. There you go. We'll move this up the card. Uh, Hirona. Yeah, we'll move this as the uh, semi-main. Takeuchi Terrell. <clears throat> Two more fights. Joel Sutton should be in, the, in a fight somewhere. Is there someone he could actually fight? Masatoshi Abe, Katsumura. Uh, let's do Katsumura. He lost a trig, so that's not a good... I don't think that's a good indicator of how good or bad he might be. Meanwhile, this dude lost to Rich Clemente. Uh, yeah, let's try Katsumura with Sutton. Let's see what he can do. And one more fight. Uh, we could do Jeff Curran. Is there any more? Oh, okay. Denny and Camacho are both hometown guys, and they're very close. In uh... all right, yeah, I think that would be uh, that'd be probably that could almost be a semi main event right there as well. <clears throat> I might actually do that. <clears throat> Denny and Camacho, I think, are going to be a little bit better. <clears throat> Considering both of them are our hometown guys. Hey, Jack, what's up? You can only afford a dollar's worth of bits. I'm, I don't mind. I don't care either way. I appreciate it nonetheless. <clears throat> I took an antihistamine earlier. I don't know why my nose is like replugging. But at least we got uh, January and February set up, so hopefully we'll have people ready to go for March. That'll be helpful. <clears throat> so that's good. That's good because we're going to get eight, eight events in this year, and we're going to roll into 2000, hopefully hitting, hitting strong when, uh, when uh, hopefully we'll get uh, monthly events rolling. You know, we have eight fights Eight fights on the next, on on the next two. I'm good with that. All right, let's do this. All right, here we go. Revolution FC Grand Prix 1999. The Revolution FC Open Weight Championship will be on the line. Uh, we will see Naoya Uematsu, Takanori Gomi. Uh, Brandon Lee Hinkle, Frank Trigg, Geza Kalman, Steve Lee, and of course the reigning champion, Alexander Frank and Noguera boasting a 7-0 undefeated record facing Ian James Shaffa. We'll also see the first women's open weight championship decided here as Aaron Tuffle takes on Mary Jackson. We'll have uh, Jens Pulver taking on, uh, oh he lost to Chris Little. And we'll also see Kara Parisian, who uh, lost his undefeated status to Andre Arlovsky in his last fight. So the tournament brackets for the Open Weight Championship tournament is, you can see, Frank and Noguera versus James Shaffa, Kalman and Lee, uh, Hinkle versus Trigg, and Uematsu versus Gomi. And you can see there Noguera and Ian James Shaffa, I would say, shaf has been on a bit of a roll but uh, noguera of course is uh the the reigning champion so uh, a lot of people going for him on that one why not keep it going 
Gaza Big Dog, Kalman, and Steve Dominance Lee. A lot of people going for Lee against uh, Kalman on this one. It'll be interesting to see what happens there. Brandon Lee Hankel and Frank Trigg. Everyone assuming that Brandon Lee Hankel will just be a tomato can for Trigg despite having the weight advantage and the reach advantage. And this will be Trigg's last night in Revolution as I'm sure he got signed by UFC. UFC. So pulling for pulling for Hankel there. And of course we'll have... Uh, uh, Naoya Uematsu versus Takanori Gomi. Uh, once again, a lot of people thinking Gomi is just going to railroad Uematsu. Gomi does have a weight and uh, reach advantage in that. Our first women's MMA fight, as you can see, Steel Aaron Tuffle and uh, Diamond Mary Jackson. The first time they have fought, Jackson has won the last three of her five fights by decision. She'll have a weight advantage. This is both of their. Uh, Revolution debut, Tuffle's uh, pro debut, but Tuffle is uh, considered the odds-on favorite to be our first open women's open weight champion. Jens Pulver taking on Caro Parisian. Uh, not sure how Pulver. I don't think Pulver's won for us yet. No, he's 0-2 right now, looking for his first win as he takes on Parisian, who suffered his first loss against Arlovsky in. Uh, in his uh, first revolution fight. A lot of people going for Parisian here. He has the weight advantage and the reach advantage, but we'll see what happens as Jens Pulver takes on Kara Parisian. All right. John McCarthy, the referee for this fight. <coughs> Interesting to see how this, uh, how this works out. I want to see Jens Pulver actually have some decent fights. That's my... That's my big thing here. I don't want to see Jens Pulver just get annihilated. All right, Pulver. Uh, trying to get something here. Pulver's landing a few things, it looks like. Let's see. He's, he's still doing a little bit here. Not a whole lot. Let's see. His left jab, quick punch, misses that. Oh, that's an annoying song. All right, less than a minute left in the round. Not a whole lot going on in this first round here. Pulver, they said Pulver seems to be up just a little bit on that one. Flurry of punches. There you go. You think the judo guy would try to... Oh, boy. Carol Parisian knocked down by the boxer. That's it. Jens Pulver finally did it. Jens Pulver finally did it. TKO a minute nine into round two. It was a great fight for Pulver as he gets his first official MMA win. Thank God. <laughs> there you go. He thanks all his sponsors for backing him. Thanks his family, friends, and supporters. And he praises Parisian for his tough fight. All right. We are determining it. our first. Oh, boy. They already put the belt on her side. Just stopping on him. <laughs> You're a mark. Well, at least you said it. Uh, but yeah, betting lines seem to favor Tuffle here. It's almost like as if they gave her the belt already. But we'll see what happens as uh, we get our first women's open weight title match underway. Here we go. Mary Jackson is a couple inches bigger and has a 45 pound weight advantage. Jesus, 220 pounds for Mary Jackson. See what happens here. Tuffle coming forward, moving to the inside. Let's see, boxing and BJJ and kickboxing. So I think most of it will stay to the uh, stay stay up, but you never know. She could try to take this to the ground at some point. <clears throat> two counter left hands. One, two. Eh, Jackson seems to be Jackson seems to be keeping her own here as far as. Uh, as far as staying it, staying together here. Uh oh, Jackson's already starting to, starting to gas. I think Jackson might have gotten the first one. So, oh, oh, there was a buzz in the air. Hang on. I don't think many people expected Jackson to start this well. Let's not forget she's a heavy underdog in this fight. 
So Mary Jackson could walk away with the with the uh, women's open weight championship. Starting to slow down a touch, a little bit fatigued. She's very tired. This could come into Tuffle's uh, wheelhouse here. She might be able to be able to work on this. <coughs> Let's see here. Tuffel still. All right. As long as she as long as she keeps laying it in onto Jackson, Jackson might have to go a third round, and that's gonna be uh that's gonna be big for Aaron Tuffle here. Let's see, moving back to the center. Uh oh, Tuffle I think might be starting to tire a little bit too, but Jackson I think is uh definitely a lot worse for wear. So I'm thinking the way the way it's looking now, this fight should go to a third round. I'm thinking 1919 on both. Oh, we do have a third round. All right. Oh yeah, it is a title match. So it's oh my god, it's gonna go five. This is this fight is not gonna go five rounds. It's not. It's not even gonna go four rounds. What round or judging settings am I using? So what I'm doing is for regular fights it goes two rounds and if it's not decided at that point then it goes to a third deciding round um in main events and title fights it goes four rounds and if the fight can't be decided by that point then it goes to a uh fifth it goes to a fifth decider round so which I like because if someone, I mean, to be fair, there are a lot of like, I can't imagine how many UFC fights have gone someone's way because in the last like minute or so, someone, you know, someone pulled it out to even after they were getting their ass kicked for four rounds and 10, nine. Yeah. Not, not a uh, whole fight scoring. Yeah. It's round by round. I believe a 10 point must. So, yeah, round by round, 10-point must. <clears throat> Let's see here. Is Jackson trapped against the ropes? Oh, yeah, I'm using, a, I'm using a ring as well instead of a cage, which I don't know. It doesn't really come into play too much, but, yeah. I just I just like the idea of it. I feel like MMA, MMA events in America in a ring is not – like a, a big thing anymore I don't even think it was much of a big thing ever alright so it looks like Tuffville might have had uh, three straight rounds on this one uh, three, yeah, three straight rounds on this one and yeah they are going to award that to her Mary Jackson was able to stick around and uh, not not, uh, not not die of exhaustion but uh didn't do enough to beat Tuffle there as Tuffle Aaron Tuffle is going to be uh, crowned the first ever Revolution FC Women's Openweight Champion. So she praised her team in American Kickboxing Academy, her sponsors and fans. She's delighted starting off her Revolution career with a win as well as her pro career. So this is her first fight, first win, and she won the Women's Openweight title. Closest would be old school tough man, yeah. I figured I was. I wanted to try something a little bit different, you know. These days, they only really do it in Japan, I think, with uh, Ryzen. It's about the only time I see them do a ring ever. How do you know if the fighters are tired? It'll tell me. Yeah, it'll tell me. It's like, oh, they're looking shattered. They're looking exhausted. They're gasping for air. It's just kind of something to like look for as you as the play-by-play uh, -play goes by. <laughs> they'll 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 be more than happy to let you know if someone is exhausted. <laughs> so here we go, Gomi and and uh, Uematsu. Let's see here, seems to be very back and forth between them here. So not a whole lot coming in. Uh, Gomi Gomi might be able to do a little bit more here. I think Gomi might have that one on the first round. How do you know the fighters are bloody? I, I guess I don't. I bet you the the game might tell me if there's blood. Oh yeah, there is. There is. Uh, yeah, there. I guess there is a time where it will tell me if there's a cut right here, and they'll tell me if there's a cut above their eye. Gomi drives him into the ground with a slam. 
That is probably about all he might need as long as he keeps Uematsu on the ground. Uh, Gomi might walk away with a win here within just two rounds. As I think he probably won round number one. And with a slam and keeping him away, that should get him round number two as well. He doesn't even have a team. This man doesn't even have a team. <coughs> I don't think Uematsu. Yeah, this one's this one's a bit more. Yeah, let's see here. And judges see if he'll have a decider. We got 2017 for Takenori Gomi. Wow, they even they even did uh, eight points on that round for Uematsu. Poor Naoya Uematsu. As uh, Takenori Gomi is going to move on to the next round of the Revolution FC Grand Prix. We move to fight number two in the Open Weight Championship Grand Prix. Brandon Lee Hankel versus Twinkle Toes Frank Trigg. It seems as though uh, Trigg is a heavy favorite in this one. Big John McCarthy, the referee for this. Although I do got to say, Trigg has a massive size advantage to deal with on this one. So we'll see if maybe that works to Hinkle's, uh, Hinkle's uh, advantage here. Hinkle coming in, tries to wrestle. He's going to have to try to wrestle him, but Trigg does know wrestling and judo. So who knows? But I think if Hinkle can actually get the takedowns, that could do a lot better for him. So a lot of not a lot of back and forth right now. I think this could go about either way, maybe for Trig, just barely. Yeah, what did he what did he say about that? Trig, the heavy favorite, has stamped his authority on the fight in the first round. But uh, not able to do too much damage to Hinkle here. That's a good idea. There you go. Hinkle with a takedown. That could get him this round. That is what Brandon Lee Hankel need to, needed to do. He's going to have to take it to the wrestling. This one could go to Brandon Lee Hankel. This one it could do a lot. Ah, oh, lack of progress. That's all right. But if Hankel goes for it again, he could definitely take out. Uh, he could definitely take him on this uh, second round here. Final 60 seconds. We'll see. I think this could. I think this will go to a third round. I want to see this go to a third round. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Trigg was putting in a lot of strikes in there. I don't think there was enough when he took him down. Maybe. All three judges 2018 for Frank Trigg. Henkel did put on a good display to try to get it to a third round, but not enough. As uh, wasn't able to land much, and then Frank Trigg lit him up once they stood up. Good try for Brandon Lee Henkel, but Frank Trigg was just a little too much. <clears throat> Rigged? Don't you mean trigged? <laughs> Boo. Uh, Gessa Colbin and Steve Lee. This is a very, very uh, possible back and forth fight here. This could be John McCarthy, the referee for this. Let's see how this goes. Steve fucking Lee. Let's go. Oh, shit. Let's see what this has. Pre-fight face-off only serves to show how much taller Steve Lee is. He is 6'8 over 5'10. And uh, he gets a good reaction fighting in front of a home crowd. Steve Lee in front of his home crowd could walk away. The open weight champion. Oh, my God. Fucking balding Steve Lee. I, for I always forget who the name of the guy is who's actually whose picture that actually is. Who cares? Let's see what he can do. Oh, my God, it's done. Holy shit, just like that, it's done. Instead of a left jab, but he catches Coleman with a right hook, and Coleman collapses in a heap. It's over. There you go, semifinal spot in the open weight championship. 127 in round one. Steve dominates Lee. Then that definitely rings true tonight as he dominates Gesa Coleman. Here we go. Oh, he had nothing to say. Nothing to say. Let's just get to the next fight. Alexandra Franca Noguera versus Ian James Shaffa. Let's see how the defending champ does in the semifinals. John McCarthy again. I guess the only person available tonight. 
immediately trying to go for a takedown. It looks like Schaff has been doing some uh, some some tape watching here, as he knew that uh, he was going to do that, but he doesn't get it that time. As uh, Nogueira immediately going to take him down, and this is what has won him his many fights. And immediately, Jesus Christ, he tapped him out in under four minutes. 325 rear naked chokes him. Oh, the submissions working once again for Alexander Franca Noguera. This man is, I can't believe no one has signed him yet. I can't believe no one has taken him. I don't care. Alexander Franca Noguera once again lives to, uh, to tap out another dude in under four minutes. Those submissions, the takedowns that have been a big, 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 big deal for him here. Oh, boy. Takanori, Gomi, and Frank Trigg. Actually, Gomi considered the slight favorite against Trigg here. So let's see what happens here. The winner of this. Oh, shit. It's Mario Yamazaki. Oh, boy. Here we go. <laughs> Mario, if he dies, he dies. Yamazaki. <laughs> you asked for another referee. This is what we got. You're going to eat those words. Yeah, I'm sure he's going to get signed by pride here in about five seconds, and then I'm going to be not not happy. All right, Trick Nods and instructions. Okay, let's see what happens here. Gummy, it seems to be a lot of back and forth right now. Not a whole lot seems to be going together here. It'd be interesting to see one of these two guys is going to the Revolution FC Openweight Championship match. Let's see here. Uh, Gomi, Gomi, I think, might have a slight advantage. Yeah, I think uh, Frank Trigg isn't hitting all that he needs to hit here. So uh, I think Gomi might have a slight, slight advantage here. It seems like it could go either way between these two guys, though. Uh-oh, Gomi already seems to be out of breath. That's not good. Trigg going in for a takedown. That could secure the round for him. They needed just a little bit of something, but we'll see if Gomi did just enough to keep himself in this. You got a right, right hook in here. Big right hand. You're planning for the evolution to just sign literal midget to a 5'6 and just run super lightweight. It's nice. Hey, we got, we got Steve Lee, man. That's like 6'8", 280 right there. He's a big boy. <clears throat> we got a lot of big boys. And then dudes who look like big boys, but for some reason are like 5'10". Trigg slams him down. Oh, boy, this could go Trigg's way. Oh, my God. Could we actually get Noguera versus Trigg in the main event? Not like I would put too much past Noguera at this point. The man beat Boss Rutan. So we'll see what happens. 1919, but we'll see if there's a deciding round. 1919, 2018, Gomi. 2018 Gomi oh my god Taganori Gomi by the skin of his teeth in majority decision is gonna walk away with this he did just enough in the two rounds better than what Trigg has done I was honestly thinking that Frank Trigg was gonna walk away was gonna either walk away with a win there or we were gonna get to a third round but Takanori Gomi walks away with it and he's going to face the winner of this next match. I I even I even feel like that really should have gone to a third round. I think Frank Trigg did enough in in those two rounds to warrant a third round, but apparently the judges didn't. That's fine, whatever. Takanori Gomi's going on Steve Dominance. Oh my god. The size difference. 68 versus 57. 284 versus 168. Steve Lee is 13 inches taller than Noguera and a hundred and twenty nearly 120 pounds bigger. But this is Noguera's time. Let's see if he can retain this. Here we go. A shot in the final. Tyrone Hup. Your referee in this. My God. 115 pounds. The fans, the hometown fans coming for Steve Lee. This could be, this truly is a semi-main event right here. Hometown guy has a shot at the heavyweight title or the openweight title and a shot at finally dethroning. Uh-oh, here we go. Oh, no, not able to get the takedown on him. 
All right, Lee Lee seems to be bodying him here. This might this might help to his advantage. The massive size difference could help with Steve Lee here. He's got 10-9 on the card. He's going to have to Nogera's going to have to get something. This is about the most precarious position I've seen Nogera in. He's going to have to start taking him down and wrestling him down. Although Steve Lee has Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in his background, so I don't know how well this is going to work. Oh my god. Could this happen? Yeah, trying to make it happen, but no, Steve Lee sprawling, able to make able to keep himself from getting taken down. Once again, trying to wrestle him back into the ropes. Oh my god, trying to push him in there. Smother him against it. Oh my god. Shooting for a takedown, still can't get it. Oh my god, he can't make it happen. Is that going to be it? Oh my god. Is this going to be it? 2018 for Steve Lee. Holy shit. Alexandra Frank and Nogueira has lost. He has lost in the semifinals. This man, I did not think he was going to lose to Steve Lee. The power of the hometown crowd behind Steve Dominance Lee as he could potentially walk away with the Revolution FC Open Weight Championship. <laughs> this balding 23 year old in the championship fight against Takanori Gomi, he's a massive underdog. Oh my God, is he a massive underdog? <laughs> Here we go. Open weight title fight. We got the open weight championship tournament ending right here. Big John McCarthy, the referee. There are your judges. 105 pounds given up by Gomi as well as 12 inches. Great reaction from the fans. Fighting in front of a hometown crowd. Let's go. Jab wide from Gomi. Gomi, Gomi putting in a lot of strikes here. This might be what he has to do. Both of them, both of them seem to be exhausted after this, though. Uh oh, strike landing under Steve Lee as he seems to. They seem to have opened up something on him. My God, Takanori Gomi standing and banging with a guy twelve inches bigger than him is amazing to know. Oh my God, Lee with a vicious stomp. Doesn't seem to have too much left. Let's see. Maybe Gomi can keep this on. Once again, this is going to be a potential five rounds. We're going to go at least four rounds. So let's see what happens. 10-9 in favor of Lee. All right. Let's see. What do they What do they have going on here? Not how they saw a fight. Gomi looks a little shell-shocked. Didn't imagine that Lee would keep this going. I'm telling you, that hometown crowd working for Steve Lee here. Trying to go on, trying to close the cut on him. He's got at least three more rounds in uh, to get underneath of him here. <clears throat> right hand set of strikes. Oh my god! Still, he's still throwing a lot of punches though. He's still trying to keep Steve Lee on the uh, on the defensive here. But uh, as long as Lee keeps him uh, out of range, this could this could go well. <sighs> I like I said, Steve winning is cursed. Why is it cursed? <laughs> this is amazing. This is the this is the best thing. This is this uh, we're living in the best possible timeline. <clears throat> Not a whole lot going on here, but Gomi wants to keep it going on Lee. He wants to keep him fighting defensively. Look at him. I know. Look at him. This physical specimen. <laughs> Look at this physical specimen. <laughs> Stalemate for the next 30, 60 seconds. Lee doesn't seem to have too much energy left. 10 9 possible for Gomi. Potentially 19 19. <laughs> Naito lost. Hiromu injured. Eo isn't getting over. Curse timeline. He has a foot and 108 pounds on Gomi. That's just how it worked out. <laughs> I guess he's probably the biggest dude just around. I really, I really could start bringing in like weight, weight classes, but this is too much fun. 
Let's see, exchange a few strikes. See what we have here. Backed up into the ropes. Foot stomp for Gomi. He's going to try to keep this going. Lee seems gassed. Minute left. If Gomi keeps the pressure going, he might be able to keep this keep this out. Uh, an incredibly close round. Bob Sap. Oh, Bob Sap coming in and facing Steve Lee. Oh, my God. Inject that into my veins. Lee. Oh, my God. Lee takes him down. Oh, my God. If he can keep control throughout this round, this could go his way. Oh, my God. Gomi trying to land in a submission but not able to... Not able to lock him in. Oh, my God. Both guys back to their feet, though. <clears throat> Fighters both tired. Lee once again trying, but not able to make it happen. Oh, trying to do another. Oh, he got another takedown. Oh, my God. Steve Lee pounding away. Gobi tries to get in a triangle. It gets blocked. Time running out. Round four is over. Is this going to be it? All right. This is for the championship. Let's see how the judges rule on this one. I'm thinking one of two things is going to happen. They're going to award Steve Lee the fight right here, or we're going to go to a fifth round. Here we go. Let's give it to the judges. 39-37 to the winner and new Revolution FC Open Weight Champion, Steve Dominance Lee. Big time upset win. The crowd going wild. He holds up the belt. The interim open weight championship. I mean, I feel like he beat the champion. That you are you're the champion, my man. There you go. Continue on with the show. He thanks everyone connected to USA Stars MMA for helping him prepare for this fight. He celebrates winning the open weight championship, calls it a great achievement. There you go. Critical rating of 69. I will take it. Nice. Commercial rating is off the charts. Oh, my God. Gate of 318 people watching that. 34,000 coming through. Uh-oh. What did you dig up from my Twitter? Oh, yeah, my Uncrustable thing. <laughs> I was like, what have you dug up? <laughs> <laughs> Steve Dominus Lee wins in a 69 performance, not an upset. I mean, it was he was considered the underdog in that fight. Only 0.7%. Jesus Christ. Uh, submission of the night. Franco Nogueira tapping out Ian James Schaffer. The only submission. Steve Lee gets a Kalman as knockout of the night. Ooh, Jens Pulver and Kara Parisian. Um... God, I kind of, you know what? That's the only great match out of all of this. So, yeah. Are people lazy like that lazy? They can't make a sandwich. I was at work. I was at work and they're in the vending machines. They have these little food vending machines that are refrigerated. I was already at work. I can't, I can't leave to go make a sandwich. I mean, if I really, really wanted to, I guess I probably could have brought bread, peanut butter, and jelly with me. <laughs> but I wasn't going to go into the break room at, at work during my break and make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at the table. <laughs> so it's, it's not so much laziness as much as it is. I didn't have anything around me. $28,000 in pure money for that steve lee making 5700 dollars in that night jesus good for him steve lee beat takanari gomi to become the open weight champion frank trigg losing also helps he's gone so yeah a lot of a lot of great stuff going on there uh do you want to see here yeah belts so we got the women's open weight at 42 prestige and at 35. Oh my God, that prestige keeps going down. Now with Steve Lee as the new champion. The lineage, of course, Dan Henderson. It was stripped after leaving the company. He was champion for five months. Then we had the one year dominance of Alexandra Frank and O'Gara, which was ended by Steve Lee, our new champion. And the 
question, I guess, remains, who can beat beat Steve Lee? Jens Pulver joined the Alliance. Frank Trigg left, and uh, Aaron Tuffle beat Mary Jack. Oh, who's on the short list? Must be the other one. Eh, short list, short list. Oh, my God, where's the short list? There we go. On short lister. There you go. She's already, she's already in the company. We're fine. <coughs> Did I hear rumors about the Stardom DLC? No, I don't. No, I haven't, but I pretty much have the Stardom people already, so I don't mind all that much. Credibility's at a 70. That's fine. No dr Oh, I forgot about the drug testing. Fuck. This alter. Uh, drug testing, yes. Because I know our drug testing is at, like, minimum. So, yeah, let's keep our drug testing up. <clears throat> Cost per fighter is $6. Perfect. <laughs> it's like, listen, here's 50 bucks. We need to do some drug testing on these guys. Just, you know, make up some results and we'll, we'll send them out. <laughs> <clears throat> I wonder if it goes yeah 15 ugh, 15 dollars a fighter Jesus yeah we'll just imagine someone taking so many drugs that they actually get caught with that oh my god all right let's move on to a brand new year see if there's anyone else I want fighter of the year Masakatsu Funaki company of the year UFC Fight of the year was uh, Mark Kerr and Brian Johnson. Knockout of the year was Hiro Hiromitsu Kanehara with his KO victory over Gabriel Evans in Pride. Show of the year, Pancrase's uh, Invincible. Let's see. Uh, Masakatsu Funaki and Andre Kapilov in the main event. <coughs> Funaki. <laughs> Wrong Funaki. Submission of the year, Matsukatsu Funaki uh, submitting him, I'm guessing, at that show. Main event of the year, Kun <laughs> Funaki and Kabilov. Rookie of the year, Dennis Hallman. Let's see here. 1900. Oh, he's signed by UFC, of course. Team of the year, uh, Real American Wrestling. All right. Upset of the year, Takata versus Branco, where Jupe Castile upset Yuri Volan. Worst fight of the year. Thank God it wasn't me. Matt Lindland getting a victory by a unanimous decision over Renzo Gracie. All right. Kazuyuki Vegeta. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> they used his fucking, like, his card. They used a trading card. I think if I this before, we need Minoru Tanaka. Yeah, let's get let's get Fujita. <laughs> Kazuyuki Fujita. Uh he's not signed to anybody. Two thousand a fight. God. Uh yeah, there's not much I don't I don't know if I want to do no two thousand a fight. Let me see. here talk to him. Let's talk to him, see if he'll Alright. Yeah, let's get Fujita. <laughs> let's get Fujita. Do we want to spend two thousand? Why not? <laughs> How could anyone playing this pronounce a Gracie? Pronounce a Gracie R, not as an H. Oh. Ha 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 ha. <coughs> Sorry. Um. All right, let's make that offer. Uh, you're not happy with the financial package. All right, yeah, let's go 10... 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. You probably still won't take it. I probably should have sweetened it just a little bit. <clears throat> I wonder if I can. Here, let, me, let me try to renegotiate where, where he's at here. Let's up it to like 15 real quick. Uh, da, 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 15, 15, 15. A man of his stature. There we go. 
All right. I can <laughs> kind of see the logo in the back. Um, I don't know if he worked for All Japan. Looks like according to his Wikipedia, he worked for New Japan. Let me see here. He probably did, though. And then Kazu, Yuki, Yuki, Fujita. He did. Uh, yeah, because the, the way it looks, he was in New Japan, so. He was never in All Japan, so, yeah. Wind. He did pretty well for us. I don't know how he managed to have such a stinker. Maybe it's because of Renzo. All right, Antonio McKee sign, Fujita sign, and Mado sign. Oh, look, another Gracie. 
There's a lot of buzz going around about Ralph. Oh my god, why does he look like the like the like the 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 cokehead of the Gracies? Twenty six hundred. He's not under a contract with anybody. It's like, hey, listen, this guy is five and zero. Oh. He's great. You should you should sign him. <laughs> All right. Uh, Move to the next Monday. We'll try to get one more one more of the uh, of the events done and gone. <clears throat> Was drug tests. Uh, okay, cool. Everyone defended. Everyone did fine. Cool. We go to. Four. Oh, I should, I should probably look at this. Uematsu left his team. Oh boy. Did you see how easily I got my shit kicked in? I'm I'm leaving. And they really want me to sign a Gracie. Really, really want me to sign him. Uh, let's see. Ian James Schaffer joined left left Fry Severn team to do another team. Carlos Newton beat Hagar Chin. Didn't I used to have him? What's his fight history look like? No, I didn't. But he's fought guys that. <laughs> We fought guys that I used to have. I need Carlos Newton back at some point. Oh my God, he's he's doing well. He's doing well. He lost to Dan Henderson. He did a loss to Brad Kohler when he was here, but yeah, he was a ranked fighter. He's, he's getting there. And uh, Uematsu joined another team. All right, cool. Let's see here. Pride. Feel the burn. Price 7 got a visitor. Okay. Thursday. Still nothing going on. Alright. Friday. Still nothing going on. It's fight night once again. Revolution 17 weigh-ins. Oh my god. As it turns out. Oh shit. Nogueira left his team. Oh boy. That is... That's something. Nogueira left his team, man. I want to see the absences real quick. Okay, everyone else will be back in about a, a week or so. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I, I just got to remember, I think, that I need to maybe sign up for a, a fight in March. <clears throat> I need to get Nogueira a fight in March. And I need to get um, Steve Lee his first title match against whoever I think is going to win this. <coughs> or his first title defense. So here we go. Revolution 17 featuring a number one contendership fight. Fabiano versus Buentello. Here we go. Fabiano going to go head to head with Buentello. We got Mark Hall and Dave Monet in a rematch from over a year ago. We've got uh, Tim Lajic. Uh, we have Ryan Bowe, and we have Rodney Glunder. Of course, the main event. He, he has main eventing the show for the third time. Bowentel has won the last three of his five fights by decision. This is the first time they have fought, though. The betting lines have Fabiano as a major favorite to win. We'll see what happens, though. And then we have Ryan Bowe and Toby Imada. This is the first time these two have fought. Imada has a significant weight advantage, and uh, a lot of people are thinking that Imada is going to walk away with this. All right, we've got Mark Hall and Dave Monet in a rematch from uh, Revolution 9 back, uh, back in 1998. Monet won by split decision. So, you know what? Even then, it was a very close fight. A lot of people still saying Manet going to win this one again, but we'll see what happens. And then we've got Rodney Glunder and Mike Pyle. Glunder is back. I, I think it's been a little while since he's fought, honestly. 
November 9th. Okay, so he did fight. He did fight a, just a couple months ago. All right. But uh, he'll be facing Mike Pyle. who will be making his pro debut, and uh, he'll be uh, having a bit of a hometown advantage possibly with this as uh, he's a slight favorite to win that. Barrett Yoshida and Dirty Bob Schreiber, the first time these two guys have fought. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Dirty Bob Schreiber has yet to win a fight in Revolution. He has had five straight losses, which usually means he'd be tossed. But uh, I find something fun about a guy who is consistently lost, uh, about uh, consistently using him. I've got no problem with that as uh, he'll be facing Barrett Yoshida here. You know what he is? He His 0 for 5s. Oh, whoops, that's not what I want. I feel like he's the guy who kind of helps bring people in. He's he's the he's the um, he's the uh, the stepping stone for the big stars. Yeah, he's the jobber, the MMA jobber. <clears throat> uh, but he will have a weight advantage and a six-inch reach advantage. This is a Revolution debut of Yoshida, but most people are going for Yoshida on this one. And then we have uh, Ian Freeman making his Revolution debut against the returning uh, scuffed Kurt Angle, Brad Kohler, who hasn't fought since March of last year. So it has been 10 months he's been dealing with some of his legal issues. He is now back, and uh, he is looking to uh, come back strong. Uh, however, a lot of people going for Ian Freeman on this one. We'll see how well this works. He is, of course, undefeated at 7-0. Uh, Brad Kohler has sort of a... Not even quite 50-50 just yet of, uh, of wins here. So we'll see how he can do. No love Rich Clement making his... Uh, rev oh, no, he, he did have one fight already. I forgot. I forget about the guys who've already been here for one or two fights. Rich Clement taking on Tim Lajic. Tim Lajic's been quite good for us. He's uh, been kind of back and forth against some of these guys. But uh, he's got a couple of nice wins over Bob Schreiber. And we'll see if he can uh, use that weight advantage to his advantage. But uh, a lot of people going for Clement in this one. And then, of course, the opening match. It is the, I believe, okay, not pro debut, but the revolution debut of Jake Shields taking on the Wolf Eugene Jackson. Shields has a five-inch reach advantage, but a lot of people going for Jackson in this one. So we'll see what happens. Here we go. You bought College Hoops 2K8. Bad news, you couldn't get it new and got it used. I'm not surprised. I would love to. I'd love to see someone in 2019 still having like in the plastic wrap copy of College Hoops 2K8. I, I highly doubt that's a. I mean, it, it, it could happen because I know there's still people even back in the N64 like N64 games still still in the plastic wrap in the box. So I guess it is very possible. As long as the disc works well, that's all that's that's all that's needed. Haven't been paying attention the first round here, so uh, I'm, I'm assuming uh, Jackson uh, Jackson had a slight advantage. Okay, we'll see what happens here. <clears throat> Jackson is slowing though, as Shields might be able to come into this. You think the ISO you downloaded was new? <laughs> Same. Uh, now I'm just waiting to potentially have a, I don't know, at some point I'll probably get a better, I'll probably build myself a better computer and I'll probably be able to run RPCS3 a little bit nicer. Uh-oh, Shields has a gash underneath his eye. Let's see, final minute of the round, throwing a quick punch. Shields tries to take him down. There you go. Jake Shields trying to keep himself into this. We'll see if maybe that was enough, though. We'll see. Jackson ahead, 2018. Let's see the official scores. 1919, 2018 Jackson, and 2018 Jackson means it's going to be a majority decision for Eugene Jackson as Jake Shields will take his first loss. And Eugene Jackson with the win there. Gives a name check to everyone on his team, his sponsors, his friends, family, supporters. It was a tough fight. Show respect to Jake Shields. Rich Clemente and Tim Lajic. 
Ryzen 3 comes out, and you're going to make a new build. Your current PC is like eight years old. So, yeah. My current PC right now is, I think, about four and a half. And all I'm really worried about now is space. But I think once I finally get done with 2K like NBA 2K19, I'll have more space on my uh, solid state. Because that's like 70-something that's like gigs. And I'm almost done with 2K19 as is just because it's like, oh, shit, Clemente already done. Damn, he wasn't wasting no time. Took him down, put in the hooks, rear naked choke, and taps out Tim Lajic, and that is it. No love, Rich Clemente getting the win in 339 by a rear naked choke. Should be interesting to see what happens if you start facing off against some other, um, some uh, some other submission specialists here. You name check the team and everybody. There we go, Ian Freeman. I don't know what Ian Ian Freeman seems like. He reminds me of somebody. I don't know. He almost he almost looks like scuffed Randy Couture. So scuffed Randy Couture and scuffed Kurt Angle. Going up here, Kurt Funk, the referee for this. But yeah, I would love I would love to take my extra money and uh, upgrade my PC. But yeah, like I said, the only thing I'm really worried about is space, and that shouldn't be too much of a problem. And yeah. Also, I don't want to spend money on a on a PC or any of that stuff because I'm trying to save up money for a house and a Japan trip. That's all coming. That's all on the way. <clears throat> I'm trying to I'm trying to hang out. Every every day is just me going, "Oh god, I swear to god, just don't just don't don't like have the the flights that I want like get booked." That's all I want is to just not have the flights I already have. Just get overbooked. <coughs> all right. Force of exchange of strikes. Counter jab. I don't know what's been going on. I've been too busy talking about my money and how I need to save it. I did, I did at least one smart thing and uh, ate some groceries today because today I was feeling particularly lazy. And DoorDash is is amazing. <laughs> this is not sponsored by DoorDash, but sort of inadvertently, as I enjoy it. But I didn't do DoorDash today because I figured instead of instead of um, oh shit oh Freeman oh Freeman got him. Sorry, scuff Kurt Angle. Why does Brad look like Kurt Angle? I don't know. It was amazing to me that he looks like Kurt Angle, which is kind of funny. Because when you, if you actually like Google him, uh, and you look how he looks, and you like look up how he looks in like more straightforward, he doesn't, he doesn't actually look like that. Like this is how Brad Kohler actually looks. So he doesn't look like scuffed Kurt Angle. Like he doesn't look like Kurt Angle there. He just looks like Kurt Angle like in that one picture. The one picture they used, he looks. Like, there you go. That one, in with enough little bit of light, he looks like an overgrown Kurt Angle. But, yeah, most of the time, he, he, he doesn't look anything like him. It's just amazing how it happened to work out that way. He actually... <laughs> you know what he looks like in that picture? He looks like... He looks like... <laughs> He looks like an overgrown Joe Rogan in that picture. So in one picture, he looks like Kurt Angle. In another, he looks like a super muscular, like <laughs> just a grumpy Joe Rogan. It's phenomenal how he just looks like so many different people. <laughs> Either way, uh, he got knocked out. He got TKO'd. Ian Freeman gets the win. He's gonna keep his uh, keep him keep himself uh, undefeated, as he is uh, visibly delighted. He starts his Revolution career off with a win, and here we go. Barrett Yoshida, Barrett Yoshida, and Dirty Bob Schreiber. We'll see what happens here. Schreiber's been on a huge losing streak. He has not won a fight in Revolution yet. He's looking for that victory. <clears throat> I 
I I want to see Dirty Bob Schreiber do extremely well. I wanna I want to see him. I want to see him succeed. Uh oh, Schreiber already already getting gassed. He's gonna have to he's gonna have to start using his kickboxing here. <laughs> <laughs> He's gassed before they even hit the fir- the 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 second half of the first round. Jesus. Schreiber, come on, man. I I believe in you. Tries a punch, not able to do much of anything. Gas tank is being challenged. Oh, uh, visibly very tired. Dirty Bob Schreiber, yep. I like a dirty Bob really is just the, the best. Oh, potentially got the first round. We'll see what happens, though. He's probably too gassed to do well in the second round, though. I wonder if there's more pictures of Bob Schreiber. While, while I hopefully look away and see that he is uh, he has gotten himself a win. You know how much younger he kind of looks in some of these when it, he's like completely shaved his head. And I definitely found the picture that was used for him though. Yeah, I don't. I don't even. <laughs> Either way, let's see here. Oh, he's getting hit with high knees. I think he's probably getting his ass kicked right now. Time's up. Let's see. Schreiber might have had it. I want to see what happens. But first, I want to say, um, oh, fuck. Okay, so there's... Uh, when did this When did this, uh, When did did this? this take place? I want to see when this uh, particular thing take place. Because he, in this video, looks like uh, UFC will never come to Holland. Yeah. So, yeah. In 2012, he looks like... Um, Oh, who the fuck is it? Billy Corgan. He looks like Billy Corgan. So that's... The <laughs> he went from old man Dirty Bob Schreiber to just kind of like Billy Corgan. All right. Go to the judges. See whether deciding round is necessary. Here we go. 2018 Schreiber. 2018 Yoshida. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Is this going to be it for Schreiber? 1919. Oh, my God. We are going to a deciding round. Split draw, deciding round. Let's go. Round number three. Get the bell ringing. Let's go. In 2000, he looks like Discount Vader. In 2012, he definitely looks like Billy Corgan. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's see here. Schreiber looks totally gassed. You're kidding. Setting up a left jab. Toe-to-toe -to -toe with strikes. Schreiber looks very tired. Yoshida backing him up against the ropes. This could be enough here. Smothering him up against the ropes here. I think this is everything that Yoshida needed to get the win. Schreiber did so well. I don't think there's anything. Oh, poor dirty Bob Schreiber. I don't think he's going to walk away with a win here. This fight is over. I think, unfortunately. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so we got a 28-29 Schreiber. 30-27 Yoshida, 29-28 Yoshida. So in a majority or a split decision, Barrett Yoshida taking the win in his first revolution fight, his second fight ever, or at least professionally, beating Bob Schreiber, who once again is going to go down to 4-11 and 0-6. And oh and Still no wins on... on... Uh, on... on uh, his uh, revolution career. Yoshida thinks it should have been. You know, wow, he can't even. He can't even give props to Schreiber for making it this long. Yoshida's just like, ah, oh, man, this should have been over a long time ago. Mike Pyle, Rodney Glunder. Here we go. Tyrone Hupp, the the referee for this. Pyle's at a major size disadvantage, forty pounds. But he is uh, an inch taller than him. He's got a hometown crowd behind him. And we saw back last month what happens when you have a hometown crowd behind you. Let's see if Mike. Oh, boy. Piley immediately busted open. He's got over three and a half minutes. That is not good 
but he is able to take down Glunder. Getting a cut opened up a minute and a half into the fight is probably not a good idea. It's not going to do well for them trying to oh, to close that back up. Let's see, Pyle getting them out, trying to get them out, can't get it. Pounds away with the right hands, doesn't do much damage. As that is going to be it. Time running out, an extremely close round. We're going to try to stop the bleeding on Pyle here. Pyle immediately shooting in on Glunder. He's taking the uh, the Nogera approach here. Oh my God, Mike Pyle and Nogera are going to be a barn burner. I can already tell. Oh my God, he chokes him. And that is it. With blood and tears in his eye, he wins his pro debut tonight. Mike Pyle choking out Rodney Glunder. Name check to everyone at Pancration. He's happy to have won his Revolution debut. He's very happy here. Oh, that's good. Thank you. We're happy to have you. <coughs> Mark Hall, Dave Manet, the rematch from uh, from over a year ago. Here we go. Very, very close fight between these two. Off target with a jab. We'll see what happens. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. I keep, I keep seeing a lot of NBA. A lot of uh, NBA free agency stuff. Boy, that's... Uh, I can't believe that they managed to get such a, such a baller deal for... Uh, Anthony Davis. I, I I remember seeing the original deal that the Lakers gave Anthony Davis and thought that it gave uh, the Pelicans and thought the Pelicans were insane for not taking that deal to get to trade out Anthony Davis. But I think once I think once it was determined they got the number one pick, they were more than happy to uh, <laughs> to get Anthony Davis out of there. Wonder why they call him Quicksand is because he drags everyone down with him. <laughs> now he just starts sinking into the mat. That's his finishing move. Round number two. I haven't been paying attention too much. This is a this is a highly anticipated rematch. <clears throat> oh no! Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff going on in the NBA thing. Uh, see here, looks confident, throws a punch. I gotta be honest, I haven't seen what's been going on. Let's see, Manet definitely had that one. We'll see what happens. Are we going to a third round? We got all three judges, 1919. We are going into a third round with a unanimous draw. Let's go. One of these guys has to win, has to make it happen. Manet trying to get started here. Hall still doing a little bit. Still trying to do a little bit here. Manet off target can't really do too much. A lot of guys, a lot of these guys not able to make anything much connect. They got someone's gotta make something happen here. See enough of the round stepping in. Let's see. Right hook. Man, they these guys still. Alright. Mark Hall getting a couple hits in. Manet can't get some hits in. Hall can't get some hits in. This might be about it. Man, it'll be tough. It'll be tough to judge this fight. See what they can make have happen here. Anything, anything, that is going to be it. They say Hall might have that. I think he did actually manage to land a few strikes. Mark Hall, 29-28. Fantastic fight between them. And there you go. Mark Hall defeating Dave Monet. Very poor. It seems like that was very back and forth. I don't know. Felt very back and forth. I thought that was actually pretty good. I know I didn't pay attention to the first two rounds, but it seemed like they were very close, and they were very close right up until the end. But, oh, well, Mark Hall this time getting the victory. You know that means we need a rubber fight at some point. Tough fight and shows a show of respect to Dave Monet. It was a very poor fight, but... I feel like we do need a rubber fight at some point, at, at this point. You know, Manet won by decision. Hall won by decision. We got to make it. <clears throat> Missed hits like a failed marriage. <laughs> Ryan Bow and Toby Imada. You know what's kind of funny is one of these guys looks like they're from L.A. and one of these guys looks like they're from Tokyo, Japan. And for some reason, it's been switched. 
Either way, Amada immediately taking Bo to the ground. <laughs> Jesus. Amada firing away. It looks like he's just going to beat the hell out of Ryan Bo here. How dare you come in with a winning record, with an undefeated record. Oh, my God. That is it. Toby Amada just sunned Ryan Bo. Ryan Bo is going to have to send Toby Amada a Father's Day card in June after just getting completely annihilated 321 it was a good fight I guess but Toby Amata walking away with a strong win here there you go thanks everyone to his, on his team helping him prepare to his fight and his sponsors for supporting him financially because we sure shit don't <coughs> here we go main event time Fabiano and and Boantello the winner of this is going to get a shot at the Revolution FC Open Weight Championship. Let's see who can walk away with a number one contendership fight against Steve Lee, probably in March. Ryan Poe didn't deserve this. <laughs> of course, they're saying Buentello is a big time. Um, not a big, big time, but a, a, he is not. He is a, a, a large underdog sizable underdog let's save halfway point in the round here it looks like uh, fabiano's doing uh doing some damage here let's see here buentello still keeping himself in this though let's see here he's still he's still he's keeping it he's keeping him uh yeah, he's keeping him defensive is what he's doing he's keeping buentello very defensive so this could work out very well for uh fabiano here Buentello's done extremely well for himself in his last three fights, but I don't know if this could this could go well for him. We'll see here. Eha standing, uh, he did the standing and banging, even though he is a jujitsu fighter. So he is beating Buentello sort of on his own uh, at his own game here. He did try to go for a takedown there and got caught. So it doesn't seem like there's too much here. But uh, Buentello seems to be uh, Buentello seems to be doing a little bit more now. He's tired, but he's really trying to engage here in the second round to take this to at least. Well, uh, I guess this is the main event, so they're gonna have five. So we'll see what happens here. I'm, I'm thinking Buentello might have this second round. Ehad's been doing a little bit, but since he failed that uh, takedown, I think Buentello. Oh, Buentello got a cut underneath the eye. But I think Buentello did get that one, so we'll see here. They're gonna, uh, fortunately for him, it happened right at the end of the round. So, ah, never mind. Reopen the wound. Didn't last very long here. Now he's got four over four or uh, nearly four minutes of uh, fighting to do here. Let's see. It clinches up, looking shattered. So it looks like he is. Uh, he is definitely. He is definitely breathing hard here. Oh, man. Buentello exhausted. Checking the cut. Everything looks fine. That might have been that might have been good. Buentello having his cut looked at might have given him a chance to breathe a little bit. But Fabiano definitely taking it to him. Buentello is going to have to come in with a second wind here in round number four if he wants to, uh, he wants to have this uh, go to a fifth round. Although I don't know if he wants to try to go into a fifth round. <laughs> Looking tired. Let's see here. Buentello coming alive here in round number four. He's exhausted, but he's fighting. He's doing what he can here. Coming together for a strike, counterattacking. Maybe looking for a takedown attempt. Wasn't able to do it. Ooh, let's see here. Minute left. Buentello took the, taking the initiative. Quick one, two. I think this might be enough for Buentello to perhaps take it to round number five. Eha! Oh, he gets the takedown. That might have been able to might have been able to do it. That takedown is going to be big here. So we'll see what happens with the judges here. Let's see how they announce it. 38-38. 40-36 Eha in 43. Wow. Only Jeff Mullen was thinking that it was a close fight. The other two are like, no, Fabiano destroyed him. That's it. 
Fabiano Iha defeating Paul Buentello by majority decision after four rounds. Decent enough fight. Buentello did what he could in rounds two and four to come alive, but it was not enough. Hey, Budden, what's up? Thanks as fans connected to Real American Wrestling. Prepared to his fight and his sponsors. He showed respect. He had a lot of skill and toughness there. I consider it a fairly close fight, but Fabiano Iha has a date with the uh, the uh, open weight championship. Good. We're still hitting. We're still definitely hitting above that thirty percent. That's what we need. And the critical rating at a seventy-two means this show was technically better than the Grand Prix was. And that's even with a very very poor fight. Even though we only gained .6. Oh my God. We need some TV, man. We need some TV coverage. We need to start gaining some popularity. Holy Jesus. This is a story of not making a lot of money. Yamada Ryan Bo being the... Uh, no, you know what? I think Pyle and Glunder should be fight of the night. We only had the one there. Clemente Lajic or... Pyle Glunder. You know what? I'll give it to Clemente Lajic because that went that went quickly. So yeah, I'm gonna give Pyle Glunder the fight of the night though. I don't I don't know if I want to give Imada fight of the night for uh, for just completely. You know what? I'll give him fight of the night. He did he he did uh, he he put Ryan Bow to bed quickly. So uh, we'll do that. Seventeen thousand dollars made on that. I'll take it. Fox News. Can you imagine Fox News <laughs> being here? All right. So we'll take it to the next month. Oh, look. Tito Ortiz is going to stay in UFC. Color me shocked. All right. Let's see here. Anything? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Here we go. Come on, boys. He gonna find him a, a black haired New Zealand kid to beat the shit out of for his training. There you go. Make that offer. Josh fucking Barnett. Hey Lady Paris, what's up? Let's see. Hikaru Sato. By the way, how much am I getting for Barnett? He's a thousand dollars. I'll take that. Uh, team Fujita. Oh my God. Katsuyuki Fujita has opened up a fight team. Fantastic. Body shop fitness team opened by Antonio McKee. Oh my God. Two of our guys just opened up, man. Buentel is coming to the end of his revolution contract. Oh shit. See my God. We've actually put him through nine fights. 1300 a fight. Okay. Four years, 10 fights. And we'll put him up to eight. <clears throat> nah, all right, we'll do ten. There we go. There you go, buddy. Bob Intello, I think, has deserved it. He's done well for himself. Oh, Dave Manet is coming to the end. He got through nine fights as well. Three and six. Oh. Uh, yeah, we'll keep Dave Manet. I like him. 800. Yeah, he's only asking for 800. I'll take that. We'll put him up to eight. There you go. Yeah, let's see. Eugene Jackson's going to UFC. Rich Clemente's going to UFC. Or Rich Eugene Jackson could go to Pancrase. Me, I'm doing good. Sort of. <laughs> hey, okay. I'll take that. I'll take another cheapo fighter. And I can pay peanuts and have him fight for me. Andy Wang. 100 bucks. All right, cool. Like I said, I'll take all the cheap fighters and send you guys elsewhere. That's why you guys sign with me, so you can get noticed by Pancrase and UFC and Pride and leave me. <clears throat> Since so long has the new job. Me? Because I've been... I 
feel like you've been around at least since I started working days. Unless we're talking to someone else. <laughs> As I was going to say, it's like I feel like you've been here fairly recently. Oh, maybe it's just because you've always been here so much that I just is like, oh, yeah, you're here. Uh, I think that'll be it at least for this. Oh, my God, it's already almost 1030. Holy shit. Okay. Um, have you? I, I don't know. I don't know if you have, honestly. <laughs> Either way. Um, yeah, it's been good. I like I like this whole adjusting to days thing and, and working days. It's been nice. <coughs> Uh, either way, that will be it for Revolution FC. As uh, we got through the Grand Prix, we crowned a brand new champion. Brand, or two grand, brand new champions, actually. Our first women's open weight champion in Aaron Tuffle, and our uh, and an open weight champion and a new open weight champion in Steve Dominance Lee. Who's that actually? Jerry Harris. That's right. Oh my god, you're worried about being half 10. It's actually half 11. And yeah. Um, I'll probably be fine though. I usually don't get I usually yeah, compared to 8 a.m. before. Well, it's cuz I, I mean cuz okay, so 8 a.m. back then was my midnight now. So 8 a.m. 8 a.m. for me at that point uh, when I was doing, when I was working evenings, was what it is like for me at midnight now. So I got like an hour and a half until I get about six hours of sleep. But I think I'm still gonna keep going because I never get that much sleep anyway on uh, on Wednesday nights, just because I I usually sleep until like noon. So I'll keep going because I bought a new game and I want to play it for you guys. I've actually bought a couple new games, but one of them in particular I think you guys might be somewhat interested. And so thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. I'll be doing just a little bit more after this. But uh, if you watch this on YouTube, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And I will see you next time.